Hey everyone, we're here today to talk about a serial killer by the name of the Zodiac Copycat. And his name is Heriberto Seda. Heriberto Seda, the Copycat Zodiac. As always, all of the photos I show in my videos will be scanned and placed in my Patreon, which you can join for $10 a month and allow you to have access to some really cool stuff. Not only just the photos I show, but letters and artwork and anything they might send me. You'll have a copy of that in, the, in that page there. Um, this is uh, Seda when he was arrested. Seda's arrest photo. Um, so a lot of people think serial killers like to brag about their crimes, but it's actually far from the truth. Serial killers usually don't like to brag about their crimes, and I have to pull teeth to get them to talk about their crimes. So you will see that he's not going to be braggadocious about his crimes. Either have the last five serial killers I interviewed. It's pretty rare, actually. It is kind of nice when we have someone that's willing to talk about what they've done. But a lot of guys and women distance themselves from their crimes. Seda is one of those guys. He was uh, grew up in poverty, and he um, uh, he was angry. He was dis discouraged. He was suicidal, probably. He was just pissed off that he was poor and he had he got he couldn't get into the army and he just he was just done with life and so he was watching a serial killer show um and they were talking about the zodiac out in california and he got this idea hey what if i uh carry out a a crime spree a serial killing crime spree and i'll call myself the zodiac and these are the letters this is a letter he sent to the police um you know hey this is this is the zodiac speaking right um, he's using signs and stuff from the Zodiac. He also sent notes to the media. Uh, 60 Minutes, um, NBC, New York Post. Another sign, another letter that he would uh, send to the media. This is the Zodiac. Okay. At first, he wanted them to think he was the real Zodiac, but they quickly figured it out that he wasn't the real Zodiac. The Zodiac didn't leave San Francisco and come to Brooklyn, New York. So they realized they had a copycat. Uh, another letter he sent. This one was sent to the New York Post. So this was sent in June of 1990. Uh, he committed his first murder in March of 1990. He committed uh, three... I, I, let, me, let me just say, he attacked three people, shot three people in March of 1990. Um, he shot another one in June of 1990. Then he took a little break. Came back in August of 92. June of 93, July of 93, and October of 93. So he had a total of eight victims. Uh, three died, five survived. So he started March 1990, and he started taunting the police and the media immediately. Um, if they didn't die, it probably got very little play. So we're going to talk to the Zodiac copycat. He goes by the name Eddie. He's going to call today. He's really big at making these little origami pieces. He sends me these all the time. And uh, he's very proud of them. He actually told me how to make this one, the, you know, the wings flap. And he puts his Zodiac sign on the side, which is kind of interesting. He signs it. He's, uh, he sent me numerous letters. Uh, if you all, all want to write Seda, um, I'm sure he would welcome your mail. And uh, he sends me unique pieces. Like, this is a really cool artwork piece with his Zodiac signs on it. I, thought that, I just thought this was kind of neat. Um that's called the historical piece. I mean, this is his, this is history. This is Brooklyn, New York history. He sent me a form that he got recently from the prison, and he put down here his name and his sign. And I have a lot of letters. And what I'll do is I'll scan these for you guys so you can read what he might send someone. Here's his directions telling me how to use one of his, um, his uh, pieces of origami he sent me. But... Anyways, we will get those scanned and put in my Patreon if you want, if you'd like to see those. They're very interesting. So what he did was, he's an interesting guy. He was he, he was rejected to join the military. It really upset him, and that's what kind of triggered him. He got turned down twice. He couldn't pass the test. So he wanted to show them, you know what? I am a warrior. I am a military. I should be in the military. You know, I am a Green Beret. And he just he made up his own guns. He made zip guns, and he made up his own guns. And he just will walk up behind someone, bang, and shoot him, and just walk away. March of 1990, 
March 8th of 1990, he walked up and shot Mario Orozco and shot him in the back. The bullet stayed next to his spine. March 29th of 1990, so about three weeks later, he attacked again, and he shot German Montenegro, who survived, shot in the left side of his lower body. Bullet went through his liver. March 31, 1990, two days later, he shot Joe Prost. He died. He was shot in the lower back, hitting his kidney. He survived the attack, but dies in the hospital on June 24. So he survived. Wow. He survived three months. So he's, very, he's not a very good serial killer so far. He shot three people, and they've all survived. Although Jim died later. I'm sorry, Joe died later. June 19th of 1990, Larry Parham. He shot in the chest. The bullet misses his aorta, exits his body through his right armpit. He survives. August 10th of 92, he's taking a break now. Taking a break. Two years almost. He shoots Patricia Fonti. Shot her twice. She doesn't fall down. He stabs her. They, they claim 100 times. He doesn't remember stabbing her that many times, but they claim she was stabbed 100 times and she died. He was probably frustrated he's not able to kill anybody. June, 19, uh, June 4th, 1993. Uh, almost six months later, he shoots Jim Weber. He survives. He was shot in the butt. July 20th, 1993, he walked up and shot Joseph Diacone. He was shot in the neck at close range. Now he's probably thinking, I need to start shooting him in the neck. He survived. He died. In October, 1990, October 2nd, 1993, he shot Diane Ballard. Shot in the neck. The bullet missed the vital arteries. Stayed lodged against her spine. And she survived. So he kills Joe Proz. Prozzi, Joe Proz. Patricia Fonti. Joseph Diacone. Joe was, was shot, memory died three months later. Patricia was shot and then stabbed multiple times. Joseph Diacone was shot in the neck. Killed three, shot eight. Her, Herberto Seda goes by, goes by the nickname. Um, well, he's, he's, his, his moniker is the copycat Zodiac, but he goes by Eddie. So he's going to call in now and we're going to take his call and we're going to interview him. He'll talk a little bit about his life and his crimes. And today in prison, him and I communicate a lot. Um, some inmates want me to send pictures of women in bikinis, women with their legs spread, all kind of crazy stuff. Um, I get the weirdest requests. Sato wants me to send pictures of German flags, World War II history, pictures of tanks, helicopters. Um, he's really into history and He's really into the, the military, which he got rejected from. And it's ironic that that's his major pastime right now. And he studies it. He's probably an expert at it. He studies it all day long. So I sent him pictures of tanks and helicopters and coins and flags. And that's how um, I keep him happy. And he helps me when I need it. So stay tuned. We're going to join up here with Heriberto Seda, the Zodiac copycat who stalked Brooklyn, New York. From March 8th of 1990 to 1993 when he was arrested. All right, here we are. We're to accept charges, Roberto press Sato. 1. To refuse charges, Roberto press Sato. Thank you for Eddie. using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Hello? Mr. Sata. Yeah. How you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. Yourself? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. What's, what's, uh, what's happening today? Uh, not the same old stuff. Not much. <laughs> not much different, huh? So, um, this is for my YouTube channel. I want you to know I'm recording you. Is that okay to record you? Yep, no problem. And uh, this is a lot more laid back than when we did for the podcast, which if, if you're watching this, uh, uh, Eddie is featured on episode one, season two of Where the Bodies Are Buried podcast. And I'm showing a picture of them, uh, a picture of you in an orange shirt. It looks like you might be at trial, maybe. And then there's a picture of you in a dark shirt. It looks like you might be carrying a Bible. Have you seen those two photos? I think, well, I have probably seen it, but I think the one with the Bible is probably when I'm coming out of the jail. Are you? Preaching, when I got arrested. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. So we, we talked uh, yesterday at length, and I, I want to touch on some of those things. Um, the media dubbed you the copycat Zodiac. Your name is Heriberto Seda, but you go by Eddie. So what's what we're going to call you today? Um, Eddie, tell these guys a little bit about your upbringing and what led you with your family and poverty and the military to where you're at today. Yeah, mostly, I, you know, I grew up poor. I grew up, you know, 
isolated and there's not really much to uh, to say than than any other person that grows up in a in a poor poor neighborhood poor poor environment. Mm-hmm. So you grew up poor. Um, when you say poor, like what does that mean? How poor? Well, a lot of times we didn't have enough money to get, um, you know, food, and we had to get a loan from the from the, like different stores around the area that they they let people um, get the food, but they would have to pay later on when they get the when they get the money to uh, to pay them the food. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> How many brothers and sisters did you have? Uh, well, I only lived with um, with two at various times. Okay, two. So you and two brothers or sisters and a a, mo- a mother? I no, I have no brothers. I'm the only brother. Okay, I'm the only uh, brother. You and two sisters and a mom. Is the th- it was the four of you? Yeah, no, but at different times, you know, because one uh, one of my sisters moved out when she got a little older. Yeah, and then a younger one, younger one was there. So at different times, you know, there was only like one, one at a time, one at the okay. house. I got you. So there wasn't a whole lot of mouths to feed, but still, you, uh, your mom yeah. struggled to feed. Did she have a job, yeah, or what yeah, did she do? It was hard, yeah, yeah, but she always, she always provided, you know, so, you know, we never stopped, but it was always, like, you know, difficult, you know, we, you know, because at that time, we, um, she was on welfare, and the money always ran out, and there wasn't enough to uh, wait for the next, for the next uh, check to come in, and we had to get, you know, she had to go to the store and get food and put it, put it on on loan or hold, whatever you want to call it. And yeah. when the check came, and then she paid, she paid off the, the the store guy for the for the food. Did you pretty much keep out of trouble as a kid? Did you were you were you involved in gangs or anything, or did you stay out of trouble? No, I never was in gang or anything. My mother was kept isolated from being, you know, running around the streets or anything. Mm-hmm. So we always stayed at home. Okay. So, um, what did did you go to school like everybody else? Oh yeah, yeah. I went to school all the time. Um, I think I every year I always got the the award for having the the perfect attendance. Okay. Wow. And were you? I um, have a lot. Uh, were you a pretty good student? Did you did you have pretty good grades? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was an excellent student and and everything. Okay. And. Um, so you you want you kind of dreamed of being in the military like it it was probably your escape from i would call it the hood i grew up in the hood to you so the escape from the hood right if you can join the military you can have an occupation make some money and make something of yourself is that what you were, were thinking of doing yeah because you know I, i'm always i always felt i'm you know I'm, I'm an american and you know seeing tv all these are wars and stuff with other countries i always felt you know patriotic so I always wanted to join the military, and you know, I find it, you know, I always found the weapons interesting, and that's the way I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. So you got denied. You fl- you couldn't pass the test. You took it a couple times, and you got very discouraged when you didn't pass the test, right? Yeah, I missed it by like just two or three points. It gave you some dumb, stupid tests, like basic reading, math, and nonsense, mm-hmm. and it got me frustrated. It gave me well, one or two points. I can't join the you know the military. Mm-hmm. You know. Wow. So, after a while, you just said, you know what, you're watching a, tell me how you got the idea for the Zodiac. I was watching TV, but I got kicked out of high school, and there was nothing, you know, I was just hanging around my house, just doing nothing, and I saw this show on TV, and be already being frustrated, I just, you know, was angry, and, you know, mm-hmm. it's more, more like a retaliation. I saw this show on the serial killers, they was talking about the Zodiac killer, and they clicked in my head. They didn't catch him, so I can take his uh, identity and use it for myself and bring him back, bring him back to life. Wow! And and that will that will magnify the um, the incident that I was about to create. So I'm looking at one of your letters. Um, you've got a couple symbols on it. This is the zodiac. Uh, the twelve signs will be, and then it goes on to. Um, something about one forty-five a.m. Uh, something about signs. It's kind of hard to read this note. All shot in Brooklyn with three eighty RNL. Tell me about that. You sent it to the uh, the NYPD. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, that's the one. That's the um, the info, you know, all the different all the different incidents. I wrote the time, dates, and everything. So 
That way nobody else can, you know, say, you know, because there's always copycats and copycats everywhere. Right. You know, once something like this happens, so I gave them as much detail, that way they know it's it's me, not nobody else. And, and I, I finally, you know, you and I talked yesterday, but I have a list of your victims now, and basically I'm more interested in the date. So what year were you born, Eddie? What, what year were you born? Uh, I was born in 1967. You were born in 67, so your first incident was March of 90, 77, 90, 77, 87. You were 23 years old, roughly, 22, 23. Um, and so you, you had uh, March 8th, 1990, then, you, then March 29th, 1990, and March 31st, 1990. So you had three, boom, 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 right in a row in 1990. Um, a male, 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 two, two survived, but the third one didn't. He did, he did survive the shooting, but he died in the hospital later. Um, then you had another incident in June of 1990, and Larry Parham survived. So, you, you know, you're already at four incidents, and one died three months later, but they're all surviving. At that point, were you thinking, what do I have to do? Um, what's going on here? Did you have any thoughts like that? Or like, you know, these people aren't dying. Am I doing it wrong? What, what was your thought there? Well, that, that wasn't my thought if, you know, they died or not. Just just creating the, the incident is mm -hmm. more, I guess, the intention or whatever. You know, not really doing that, you know. It's more, you know, being recognized, you know. I got you. So it caused panic. It caused fear in the city, which is a big city, New York City. Um, yeah. It might have been the biggest incident since the Son of Sam. Here's another letter that I have. It says, this is the Zodiac. And you've got a actually drawing of the San Francisco Zodiac with his mask on. You've got a little like a pie chart. And this one went to CBS, New York Post. Um, do you remember that one? Yeah, I remember, yeah. And, um, and then there was another one you sent. And it's got all kind of like, um, it almost looks like flags or something. This is the Zodiac speaking. Here it is, August 10th. You got dates and you have white females. So, wow, you have, you have, you're letting them know, like, I definitely did this. And, um, and you even have the scorecard, um, NYPD zero, the Zodiac six, something like that. That's very fascinating. Do you remember that one? Yes. And then um, you went into, you went into, you took a break, which is kind of weird. You took a pretty good break from 1990 to 1992. So you almost looked like two years off. Um, just to help people understand, like law enforcement, Eddie, why the two year break? Well, there was a lot of tension, and uh, I just there was like um, no reason to uh, to do any more. The, the heat, the heat was on, right? The heat was on, Eddie. Yeah, the heat was on. So I, you know, wait till things calm down. You know, it was getting too hot. You know, too much attention, and wow. I didn't feel like doing any, any more, and I uh, just calmed down and waited until things cooled down. Wow. So you felt it was kind of cooled down, and here you go again, 1992. Um, so now you're about 25 years old. You um, you walked up and shot Patricia Fonte. She didn't die. You shot her twice. That's the one that was stabbed. And the media says a hundred times, but you said there's no way you did that, right? Like you don't think you stabbed her that many times, Eddie? Yeah. But you just wanted to make sure she and was. You wanted to make sure she was dead. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I ran out of bullets and I used the uh, I used that. But uh, what they're saying. The numbers, you yeah. know, I have no recollection okay. you know, of doing that. Right. And then um, almost um, six months, well, almost a year later, you walked up and shot a guy named Jim Weber. He survived. He was shot in the lower back, but, uh, but the, the, the rear end area. Then you walked up on uh, July of 93, almost a year later, you shot Joseph Diacone. He died. He was shot in the neck. And then the last one, October 2nd, 1993, Diane Ballard survived. She was shot in the neck too, but she survived. So you and I were right yesterday. You had three people died and you shot eight total. Um, is that all the victims? Do they have them all accounted for? Well, there was another one. I, I don't know which one. Um, there's one in there. There was, it was the victim never came appeared or whatever, which I did that, that shooting, but somehow the victim didn't went to the hospital or oh. something or he re oh. recovered. There was one more incident. I don't know what happened to that situation. Somebody was shot. Yeah. But they they didn't really report it because they just probably got shot. I don't know. You know they, it was, yeah. It was close. I came up to him and 
I don't know. He uh, he he thought it wasn't nothing, or because that was a small caliber, so mm. he could have recovered. Or he might have been a maybe he was a gang maybe he was a gang member and he thought it was just a gang thing and he don't, you know they don't report those. Yeah, I don't know because yeah, because that 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 day that day did happen, but mm. I guess he recovered and didn't 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 report it or anything. Wow. So after October second, nineteen ninety three. Um, when were you arrested? What was the date you were arrested? I don't remember the date. I think it was oh yeah, June June ninety six. Right? I forgot the date. June of, June of ninety six. June of ninety six. Yeah, wow, I don't so, know the exact date. Wow! So it, almost, almost three years went by, and you got away with this crime spree. Yeah, yeah. That was the time. You know, I was uh, I was thinking and reflecting a lot, and like I said before, I was. Uh, you know, little by little, I was trying to put this away. You know, because mm-hmm. of my religious, my religious convictions, mm-hmm. and little by little, I would have succeeded. But you know, the evil forces just comes and mm-hmm. gives gives this final blow, and that's the incident that happened with my sister in the apartment, which I, I, she got shot. Then she crawled out, called the police, and. In order to shoot out with the police and everything, and that's when, mm. after a standoff, I got arrested. Mm. So you had an incident. You you didn't like your sister's boyfriend. You were nervous that he was around the house, bringing attention to your house. You got an incident with yeah. him, and you you did you shoot him, or you tried to shoot him, or what happened there? No, I tried to I tried to you know shoot him, but it, it hit my uh, sister. Hit your sister. And she crawled yeah. out of the house, called the police. The police came. You had a standoff. You had. Did you have a shootout with the police? Yes. And then you were arrested. Um, d- how did they yeah, connect you? Standoff. Yeah. How did they connect you to the Zodiac case? Um, when I went to the precinct, you know, there was no um, denying that the incident happened with mm-hmm. that, that day with the police. Mm-hmm. So I wrote like a brief, I wrote a brief confession, and I signed the paper. And I put a symbol of a cross with numbers on the edges, I think seven. Okay. And I guess one of the officers that was doing the old investigation of, of, the, of the Zodiac, they, he saw it, and I guess they clicked to his head, could this be the, this guy that we're looking for? And they started investigating me, asking me questions. Wow. And they connected it. Yeah. So... I- you uh you're really into military history you probably spend a lot of time studying this and i send you pictures often of tanks and helicopters and flags and um that's something does that take up a lot of your time studying history military history yeah it takes a lot of time here because there's not really much to do here so that keeps me occupied from you know doing anything dumb or stupid in here yeah and you're religious too correct you like you go to church or bible studies or stuff like that I don't yeah. go to church because, you know, we ain't, we ain't, you know, we're, we're in protected custody. Right. Yeah, but I read the Bible. I listen to, um, I listen on TV to the religious shows I like. Okay. You sent me something that's kind of neat, and I'm showing this to the camera. It's, um, it was just, it was a cool paper you sent me with some symbols on it and some, like, it's a round circle flags. Just explain to me, what is that? Like, what are those symbols? And tell me, it's got the Zodiac right in the middle. What is that? Well, it's a little doodle. I do uh, symbols of you know. They yes, uh, sometimes they they more they Morris code or they the symbols of the zodiac and mm-hmm. very stuff dealing with the astrology. Mm-hmm. And I just do a little doodle on it on the papers just to reflect that it's me, you know. And you also like to send me origami. Um, tell me about that. Or does that something you enjoy? Does that pass the time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I always find origami interesting, so I brought some books, how to do origamis, and I started doing origamis by myself. It's a little interesting skill to learn. Yeah, my favorite is the bird that flaps its wings. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, mechanical mechanical origami. <laughs> yeah, and then you also sent me a form, which is kind of cool. It was a protective custody review. What is that? Just to explain what that what that form is. I, I'm oh, not... that's the, the, the issue that every year here to see if they want to keep you here in in this uh in this PC block. Yeah. They, they, re- they review it every month. So either you stay or you go and they give you that paper to mm. give you the decision to stay or not. Do you stay wanna here. stay do you wanna stay in protective custody? Yes, because if I go out there I just be piling with officers and inmates and yeah. then from there. If I go to population I I'll be probably in a box. 
Oh, okay. I'm not gonna let nobody. Uh, I'm not gonna let nobody rob me, steal me, or extort me, or anything like that. Right. And I'm showing them your address. Do you welcome mail, um, Eddie? Do you are you okay with getting letters or no? Yeah, I get letters from people outside. Yeah, they're always curious. You know, they want to know, ask me questions about my case or whatever, or be you know, pen pals and stuff like that. So, are you okay with that? Do you welcome letters? I welcome them sometimes, but sometimes people, you know, some of it is a little strange and odd. Yeah. Or so if you want to write, if, if you want to write Eddie a letter, not to exploit him or sell his stuff or whatever, and if you're looking for a pen pal, um, I've been communicating with Eddie for quite some time on JPay as well, and um, he's a, a he's a pretty normal guy, and we have normal conversations. And um, if you're into the military history, uh, you'd have a lot to talk about with Eddie. Um, anything you'd like to say, last words, Eddie, to the public, to your victims? Um, you know, are, I asked you this before. Are you remorseful for your crimes? I am. Yes, I am remorseful. But you know, just people don't understand that. You know, because if if you're not really a, a religious person, believe in the Bible, you mm -hmm. cannot understand why things happen. You know, you know, God forgives, can forgive even a, a murderer. He for, you know, Moses was, uh, he killed, and this is the reason, you know, he, he, he forgives him, but, you know, but he, he picked Moses, and Moses was brought down to a low state, but he brought him back up to a, to a higher state of, of, to work for, you know, in the name of God. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with Jesus Christ, he, he, he'll forgive anybody. It doesn't matter what you do, if you're a murderer or whatever, but this is what you have to understand. But this is the problem people don't understand. So, and, you know, this is what God said, don't be caught up in the world, you know, be, you know, be separated from the world. People so much with, you know, their own laws and their moral values, if that doesn't compare to, uh, to God's. If you do it God's way, the world would be much better, but people just don't understand God, they don't want to listen to Him. This is why you have so much problems in the world. Mm -hmm. See, right now, I'm calm, and I, um, I understand. So no matter what happens, nobody can do nothing. They can't change me or anything. I'm, a, I'm, in, I'm in the right path. Mm -hmm. I believe in Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He's going to be raised again. This is basic, basic foundations. If you cannot believe that, then everybody's lost, or this, all this evil that's happening in the world is just going to continue. Right, right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. We appreciate you again. And I'm sure you and I will be communicating on JPay. And um, if you need anything else, let me know. All right, all right. Thanks, Take Eddie. Care, bye. Thanks, buddy. Heriberto Seda, the Zodiac copycat. Very historical case. Stalked Brooklyn, New York in the 90s, the early 90s. I just find it very fascinating. Um, using a zip gun, is he made his own weapons. He's very smart like that. He didn't want anything to be traced, but then again, he gets caught putting a symbol on a confession at the police department. Wow. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Do me a favor, like this video, comment. I'd love to hear your comments, who you want me to talk to next, who do you, what questions would you like me to ask. Subscribe to the page if you could. Share it to your social media. Hit the bell so you get notifications. We'll be dropping lots of videos on this channel. So hope you guys are enjoying it. God bless. Be safe out there. Ha 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 ha!